All right, so uh, we're going to get started, and uh, we, uh, we expect this will take uh, in around about an hour. Um, if you have to drop out uh, early, just know that we are recording the session, uh, so you can uh, you can watch it again later, or maybe you just love it so much uh, that uh, that you uh, you just want to watch it again. So uh, that's being done, just so you know, and that will be available to other people who signed up for the webinar but actually weren't able to uh, to make it tonight. So just be uh, just be aware that others who are not here will uh, will be able to watch this. So uh, hello and welcome, uh, welcome to the University of uh, of King's College, and we're going to be talking, of course, about the uh, Master uh, of Journalism. Uh, program and I uh, just wanted to welcome uh, Tamara who has uh, has has dropped in as well to join us so uh, what I'm going to do first of all is uh, just get uh, everybody who's uh, with us uh, tonight to uh, to introduce themselves I'll start with myself uh, so uh, as you can see on the screen I'm Fred Valence Jones I am the director of journalism uh, at uh, the University of of King's College so uh, I'd also now just turn things over uh, to our other guests uh, just to say a, a quick hello and and say who they are. Hi, everyone. My name is Tara Wigglesworth Hines, and I'm the Assistant Registrar Admissions, and I will be the person who is hopefully uh, guiding you as you um, go through the application process here at King's. And my name is Akrit, Akrit Michael. I graduated from the MJ program um, last May, and right now I work at the Toronto Star. And behind the scenes. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Yolana. I'm Assistant Registrar of Student Recruitment at King's. Um, during this webinar, I will uh, have my camera off and my mic on mute. But if you have questions that I can answer in the chat, uh, I'll, I'll pop in some answers. And there will also be time for a Q&A later in the session as well with all of the panelists. That's right. And we can uh, see your questions. They will, you, you put them in in the chat and we'll be able to see them here and, uh, and then answer your questions. And don't be afraid as we sort of get into the, uh, into the sort of the, the, uh, the, the details. Uh, if you want, you can certainly ask a question and I'll find an appropriate moment or, or uh, Tara, for example, uh, we'll find an appropriate moment to answer it, even if we're not officially at the question stage yet. So welcome everybody again. And I wish uh, that I actually were welcoming you uh, in in person because uh, uh, King's is really beautiful and I love showing off our campus. Uh, this is what it looks like uh, in the summer when the trees are in full leaf and and the, we don't have sort of a combination of ice and snow and 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 all things nice in the winter. Uh, but we are located in the in the beautiful south end of Halifax and uh, we're maybe you know five minutes drive from downtown Halifax. Uh, and as well, uh, maybe a 20 minute walk. So you sort of a position us that we're very close to the hub of Halifax. Um, now we're actually located out of the third floor of the arts and administration building at King's and you can see that it's a sort of a beautiful sort of uh, uh, a sort of cl classic sort of architecture uh, with the, with the columns, the, the cupola, and uh, this actually uh, uh, dates from about a hundred years ago. This this building, so it's uh, it's quite a, a sort of a heritage place as well as as being a, a, a great school of journalism. Now, if you sort of imagine that you're standing looking at this picture, and if you look behind you, uh, behind you, you would see our library, and off to either side there are our, our residence buildings and we call this the quad we also have a dining hall and a gym uh, a chapel uh, and and it's all makes for a very tight-knit uh, uh, community uh, that we have here and uh, people really do feel it at home uh, quickly um, now that's that's sort of the small piece in, in terms of kings that we are small but we're also associated with uh, the the large and that's uh, uh, Dalhousie University. You can see the Studley campus in this photo. And if you were to look sort of up in the upper right hand corner, just below that sort of uh, brown building there, uh, where the mouse is sort of uh, yeah, tracing a circle, yeah, that's actually Kings. You can see the uh, the A and A building there with the the columns. So it's sort of uh, right right nearby is the Northwest Arm, which is part of Halifax uh, Harbor. But one of the great things about our program 
um, is that, uh, well, you know, while you're a King student and, and we have this small J school where every, everything is first name, uh, we're also uh, associated with Dell and, and you guys are equally Dell students as much as King students in this program. And that means you have access to all of the resources at Dalhousie, uh, including the, uh, the, the libraries, the International Center, the accessibility center and 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 really uh, many many more services. I could spend half an hour telling you about all the things that you have available to you at, at Dal. So I like to say kind of we're the best of two worlds here. Um, we got the big, and then uh, we we have the we have the small. Now we're also part of, as I said, a, a bigger community, and and being a, a student in Halifax uh, means that you have you know the city at your doorstep. And actually, you could sort of think of, of Halifax as kind of a teaching lab, uh, because once you get into your, your journalism courses, you're going to be out doing interviews, you're going to be visiting places such as City Hall and the legislature and finding out what's what's going on there. So really, the learning goes on uh, far beyond the doors and uh, really wherever news, news happens. Now, uh, Halifax is also a really super place to live. And I've been here for almost 16 years and felt sort of welcomed right from the minute I, I got here. But there's lovely neighborhoods. There's the, the, uh, there's a lively sort of East Coast nightlife, and uh, as you probably are, are aware, and there's a little bit of a hint of that uh, just over on the, the, the right-hand side of the, the screen now. And interestingly enough, we have the fastest uh, uh, growing downtown in all of, of Canada. So while it's it's one of the oldest cities in the country, it's also uh, growing up uh, really quickly these days. So what I'm going to do now is maybe just spend a little bit of time talking about the program itself, which of course is, is why you've all come here. And th the reason that we have the professional project slide now um, is because we like to think of the uh, the professional project as the sort of the 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 heart of the master of journalism uh, degree, and we've been working hard in the last little while to to uh, to certainly make that even more more so. Um, and and if you think of sort of a, a, a research degree that you might do in the arts or sciences, uh, so th they they would have a thesis which could be uh, quite a long paper. Well, this is sort of the journalistic uh, equivalent. So it's a piece of serious, in-depth uh, journalism that we want to be of uh, uh, publishable quality that you work on over really a period of three, nine months or you know three quarters of a year. You start in the summer, you go through the fall and into the winter. Um, and uh, you will be uh, you'll be working with uh, King's faculty as well. Depending on your project, we may pair you up with uh, an outside um, uh, media expert, uh, a subject matter expert, a mentor. This is something that we're sort of introducing into the program that you have somebody who will help you through uh, that entire sort of nine month uh, nine month period. And we're quite excited about some of the innovations that we we have planned. Uh, the The subject, of course, is up to you. And one of the things that uh, we're now requiring, as you will have seen, is that you pitch your project. So we want to see what your idea is for uh, what sort of professional project uh, you would do. And, and I would certainly recommend that you, know, you put some time and thought into this because we'll certainly be looking at those pitches uh, and those proposals for uh, the projects um, you know, as we uh, look at admissions. Now, one thing I, 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 I should say to you is we don't expect you, if you've never been involved in journalism before to, you know, to be able to turn out a sort of professional proposal of a reporter that had been somewhere, you know, for 10 years. Uh, we're really looking more here for for potential, for good ideas, clarity of thinking, those kinds of uh, those kinds of uh, things. So that's kind of the uh, the center of the program. Now I'm going to kind of walk you through sort of each of the terms. Um, so we start in the fall. And that's what we call our September entry group. So this is probably the majority of students uh, and normally is. Um, so this is, you have a degree, you have a, a four-year journalism degree, normally has to be a four-year journalism degree. It's in a subject other than journalism. Um, and you've got the sort of required B average. 
And uh, in, in, in this sort of three month period at the beginning, you're going to be in what we call boot camp, which is a, an eight week uh, introduction to all the fundamentals of journalism. So what we're doing there is we're catching you up with the students who come in in January who already already have a journalism degree or been working in the journalism business for a while. Um, so uh, that that fall is rigorous. Um, it's uh, it, it takes takes time. Uh, so uh, you know you, you would expect that you would be uh, devoting most of your time uh, to that, and uh, and of course you have to uh, you have to pass all the courses uh, in the fall. Uh, there are four uh, courses in boot camp plus the news workshop, which is a sort of a an introduction to uh, to published news reporting uh, to then proceed into the winter into the winter term. So then from there we get into the the core of the master's studies and this is where the the two groups uh, come together in the in the winter term um, of year one. And I'm here your uh, uh, Lona, I don't have a chance to change the slide. Um, here what you're going to be doing, is you're going to be learning more advanced reporting and research uh, techniques. And also, uh, you'll be starting to have an eye towards uh, your professional project. And uh, and so what you'll be doing is you'll be honing your, your idea that you pitched earlier. Um, or if that one turns out not to work, you may be developing a new one. You'll be uh, taking a course uh, in advanced reporting where you're going to learn both about the research, but also the writing. And that's going to be led by two instructors. One will focus on the research and one on the writing. So you're up to speed on the key skills you need for that big, big project. And then you'll be learning something about data journalism and uh, as well about sort of what's journalism about today. And that's the professional journalism uh, environment uh, 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 course. And then, and then we proceed on into the summer term um, and this is where you will be uh, beginning uh, the the intensive research on your professional project. A lot of independent time here, a lot of independent research time here. Uh, again, under the guidance uh, of uh, of a faculty member and potentially also a, a subject matter expert uh, who could be, for example, an editor at a at a publication that that might work with you to publish your your story. So that's what happens in the summer. And then you get into the fall term of year two, uh, and here you will continue to work on your professional projects, and 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 then uh, you will have a couple of other courses. One in the uh, in the business of journalism, because we think it's really important for you to understand the journalism environment and how journalism works in the in in the contemporary era as opposed to you know twenty years ago. Um, and uh, you also will uh, will be uh, having a course in visual. Uh, storytelling. Now, um, Ariel has a really good question here. Are students expected to stay in Halifax over the summer term while working on their professional project? Uh, no. And I should have mentioned that the, the summer term and then the uh, the winter term that I'm about to talk about uh, can be done remotely. You do not have to be in Halifax for those. So that's a great question. Thanks for asking about that. So we'll move on then to uh, the the winter term of the uh, of the second year, and this is when you will complete your professional project. You'll uh, uh, certainly be moving towards uh, publication uh, of your your projects potentially in that time as well. And and the way we have it in mind is that the goal is professional publication, so with a, a, an outside media outlet partner, and uh, but not every project will be able to have that. So then. The, also, we have the the option of publishing in the Signal, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that uh, uh, along the way here. Now, um, the uh, the electives uh, are a really important part of the uh, of the program, um, and and you have to take two electives. So the these we hope in the best uh, case scenario, these are courses that relate to your professional project. Uh, and and you can take uh, master's level courses at Dalhousie, uh, and you just basically have to have the permission of the department. You can take a, a master's level courses at other universities by uh, a letter of permission. Um, as well, you can take the ones that we offer. We have an advanced data journalism course, uh, and we're offering also reporting in Mi'kma'ki, which is a course on reporting ethically in Indigenous communities uh, as a master's level elective as 
as well. So you've got some choices uh, around that. Now, as I mentioned a minute ago, uh, a minute ago, uh, publishing obviously is is the the goal of these. Um, one of my colleagues, uh, Professor Tara Tarrier, often sort of says that if uh, if it's not published, it's not journalism. And there's a lot of truth in that. So we put a lot of emphasis on publication in the school. Uh, so as I say, uh, we have a couple of choices there. Uh, one of our master's students a couple of years ago uh, did his piece on COVID in, in First Nations communities, Dane Patterson. And he, he published with APTN National News. Uh, and we also actually published it in the Signal afterwards. And he worked with an APTN producer uh, over the period of his, his project. And then, of course, we have the Signal, which is our sort of in-house publication. And you, you can have your story uh, published there either as well or uh, or only in the signal. It really just sort of depends how things, and you'll have those conversations with your instructor and your potentially your advisor to uh, to to sort of figure out exactly how that's uh, how that's uh, going to work. But certainly, while publication is not guaranteed, because obviously that's going to depend on how it works out, uh, you really want to walk out away from this program with a. Uh, what we, we like to call a clip, and it was a clip because it used to be you took a pair of scissors and cut out a newspaper article, but uh, with a, a really great piece of journalism that you can show off and, and show your skills to uh, potential employers, whether they're in journalism or, in fact, in other fields, because you can certainly take the skills that you learn here and, and take them to, uh, to another field. So I think that's probably a pretty good... Uh, uh, start uh, to uh, to our our conversation about the master of journalism, and uh, I had the absolute uh, pleasure um, of uh, uh, teaching Akrit Michael, uh, who is now nice. Now he's done so well. He's working at the Toronto Star, um, and uh, and that of course is still Canada's largest uh, uh, newspaper. Uh, I guess all news to these organizations are morphing into something a little different. But why don't uh, we introduce uh, Akrit now, and and maybe you'd like to take a few minutes to talk a little bit about your experience in the program, and maybe even just talk a little bit about what you're doing now with with your skills. Absolutely, thank you so much for that very lovely introduction, Fred. Uh, I must say that just seeing you in this frame with your mic and your setup in your basement, it's uh, it brings back very happy memories, and I uh, have um, some FOMO actually of you know not being able to take your classes because I adored my time uh, and uh, at Kings and especially doing um, data courses with you. Um, hi everyone, uh, my name, as Fred um, very kindly mentioned, is Akrit. I work at the Toronto Star. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I graduated um, in last spring, uh, so I started in. Uh, in uh, the the winter of 2021 and then i graduated last year from the master's program um i believe i'm gonna start by telling a little bit about what i'm doing in my job right now and then while i'm doing that i'm going to correlate that with how my time at king's has helped me and enabled me to be able to do what i do now so um, I work at the STARS digital desk as a producer, and my um, ambit of focus is editorial SEO or search engine optimization. Um, I basically work to ensure that digital readers that are Googling what's happening in the news um, or are looking to find out more about a specific um, news item that might be trending, um, I try work hard and I try to ensure that those readers come to us and not our competitors. So um, figuring out the editorial needs of our digital audiences and then working with the section editors at the star to make sure that we are answering the questions that are being asked is a big part of what I do on the daily. Um, the data skills that I picked up during my time at King's are indispensable for me um, in any given work day. Um, the star um, it's a big publication um, and I believe it's the Canada's largest uh, newspaper by circulation is what it technically is a fact, but like the star gets millions of views every month. So um, as I'm trying to figure out audience trends um, from data sets with thousands of rows, um, being able to use SQL to analyze that or a Python script to look for specific terms within headlines in HTML codes of different story articles, pages, um, 
tasks like these. Um, one of the reasons why I was able to get this role, in fact, is that I had these data skills in, edit in addition to some editorial experience. Um, so King's has um, been, um, you know, fantastic in terms of um, giving me the opportunity to gain the knowledge and the skills necessary to basically have the career of my dreams. Um, I chose the King's MJ program because of two reasons. So one of them uh, was that um, King's gave me the flexibility I needed on my academic pathway as an international student. So um, as uh, Fred mentioned about the two pathways, uh, I had some prior J school education. So I was given the option um, to skip uh, retaking those foundational courses in the fall of year one. And I was able to do that and join in the winter. And that helped ab absolutely immensely. And it's something that not every J school does. Um, so um, secondly, uh, going into this program, I wanted to expand my, my data knowledge and skills because I sort of already had an audience bug in, in the back of my head and I roughly knew what I was going to do. I, I didn't know if I would be given the, uh, that opportunity uh, once I graduate, but thankfully things worked out and I, I did. But going into the program, I wanted to expand my data knowledge and skills. And as we know, Fred and his robust data courses are unmatched across J schools in Canada. So it was an easy decision for me. And um, the the two B reason, which um, um, I think I should talk about now, especially because Tara is on the call as well, is because I applied to King's and I was offered a scholarship. And as an international student, um, that helped immensely because um, we are... Uh, international students pay roughly two, two, two point five, even three times the rate that Canadians do. So any kind of financial help um, is goes a long way, and um, that was also one of, sorry, one of the factors that um, propelled me towards um, joining Kings. Um, the most valuable skill I learned in the program, um, I believe, it was not just one skill, but it was. Um, the mindset of being able to say identify a task for instance say some d data analysis needs to uh, be done to see the scope of a story idea that you're doing for those of you who are going to take um, well all of you are going to take the basics of data with Fred and then some of you might even uh, take the advanced data so a lot of what we do in that course is trying to figure out stories um, trying to look at data sets and then com coming up with story ideas. So um, being able to identify a task and then using data analysis techniques to see the scope of a story idea. Um, the courses at King's equip us with the basic knowledge to allow us to creatively answer those questions or even figure out those que what those questions should be when we are looking to report on data stories. Um, so the most valuable skill for me uh, was that mindset of being able to meet any problem or question um, head on and then use the tools, the, the, the toolkit that um, courses at King's provides us, be that in data journalism, be that in investigative courses, visual, um, audio storytelling, um, use those tools and not shirk away from a challenge, um, which is, um, a kind of mindset that really um, I try to use every day in my job here as well. Like, uh, I, I, if my manager asks me a particular question, and I, I'll, I'll tell them that I don't know the answer immediately, but I'll, I'll do some crunching and I'll let you know. And sure enough, I'm able to get there. So um, that mindset of being able to use the skills that are provided at King's to meet a challenge head on was the most valuable um, experience that I took away from King's, I would say. Um, but that was a little bit about me um, and what I'm doing and how King's has helped me um, get here. Um, I would love to take any questions and also even for those who are not in the session, um, please feel free to reach out to me. I will make sure that you get um, my contact details.
Oh, Fred, I think you're Thank- Yes, I was. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, and uh, really grateful for all the kind words you had there. So we're going to uh, turn things over to uh, Tara Wickersworth hines now, um, who uh, works in the, uh, uh, the registrar's office. And uh, Tara will be your best friend uh, when once you start entering the, the process of uh, actually coming to King's. So I'm going to hand you over to, uh, uh, to Tara for a little bit of detail on uh, some of those things. Thanks, Fred, and uh, thank you, Crit. It's so nice to uh, see what you're doing now um, since we haven't connected over the last year and a half. So um, it's uh, thank you for that uh, overview. Um, instead of uh, PowerPoint slides, we're actually going to take you to some key spots on our website that uh, will be important for you as you kind of move through this admission process if you decide to apply to King. So as Fred and Akrit have mentioned, we two, we do have um, two intakes, one at each September and one each January. Now it's important to know that if you do not have a journalism degree or you do not have a four-year degree and no experience in journalism, you can only apply for the September intake. The January intake, like Akrit um, joined us in, are for applicants who have a four-year degree in journalism or have some some similar equivalency. So that could be an accredited four-year degree in another discipline with five years of full-time journalism experience. It could be a four-year undergraduate degree in any discipline and an advanced graduate diploma from an accredited institution in journalism. We don't know whether you would meet the admission requirements for January until your application is assessed. So we have to do a thorough review of your institution and the courses you have taken um, that are related to journalism. So my recommendation, if you're not sure whether you meet the journalism equivalent, I would always encourage students to look at applying for September if you're thinking this next year and make it a note in your file that you'd like to also be considered for January 2024. That way we know to look at you for both intakes. I don't necessarily need two separate applications and two separate application fees. Uh, we can do that assessment uh, on our own. So for those who are thinking of applying this year, applications have been open since October 15th for September 2023. 20, we do rolling admissions. Um, so we assess applications as they become available or as they become complete. And, uh, but we do them in batches. So we don't assess one application at a time. We get a series of complete files and we take them to committee and assess them in batches. So we actually have our first assessment um, committee meeting tomorrow. So we're, we're, we have quite a large number of applications we're looking at. So for international students, your application deadline is April 1st. And for domestic students, it's June 1st. And we have an earlier application deadline for international applicants. Because if you're admitted, you definitely have a longer process to apply for study permits um, and all the paper uh, paperwork related to applying as an international student. So the sooner you get your application in, the better off it is for you. So even April 1st, sometimes I say is, is quite late. But we try to encourage students to get their completed applications into us by February 15th. That's coming up quite quickly. But the reason we say that is because that's also the deadline for scholarships for our September entry. So I will go over scholarships in a little bit but you can apply for scholarships even if you haven't received an admission offer. So keep that in mind uh, when I go through the scholarship application process. For January entry, applications are open as well, but they just opened up January 2nd. So applications haven't been open all that long for January, 2024, but it's the same process. Um, For international applicants, the deadline's August 31st. And for domestic applicants, it's October 31st. And this is for January, 2024. Um, So if you have any questions about uh, deadlines, feel free to put them in the chat. 
Um, the next is the admission requirements. Applying to graduate programs uh, can be quite complicated. Um, so we try to make the process as simple as possible, but keep in mind there are a lot of pieces that go into an application for graduate programs. So as Fred mentioned, um, Anacrit has mentioned, we have two entry periods. For students who are applying for September, we're looking for a minimum of a four year accredited undergraduate degree in any discipline. So you don't have to have any journalism background. And for the January entry, as I mentioned, we're looking for a four year undergraduate degree in journalism or some sort of uh, equivalent. And that, as I mentioned, could be a combination of things. And we're looking at a B average as a minimum. When we assess an academic average, we're not looking at your full four years. We're actually, for a dom domestic student or a student who's attended a North American university, we're usually looking at the last 60 credit hours of coursework. And for students who studied in an international curriculum outside of North America, we're usually looking at the last two years of full-time study. So that gives you an idea of what, how we're making that assessment. As I mentioned, how to apply, um, there's quite a lot to it. I'll try to simplify it as much as possible, but please know that I'm here to support you throughout the process. My colleague and I, um, Ashley, who's my colleague, uh, will be your main contact through the process. So you can reach out to either one of us at admissions at uking.ca. But we've tried to put it in steps. So the first thing you require, of course, is an online application. And the second is the $115 application fee. Unfortunately, we don't offer waivers for that application fee. So please keep that in mind. The other thing are transcripts. Of course, we have to assess your academic credentials. And something that has changed in the past year is we actually will assess your admissions application using unofficial transcripts now. I always recommend if you can provide official transcripts at the application stage, it's better off for you because then you don't have to worry about sending them in if you're admitted. So if you have the opportunity to send officials, I would recommend that. But we do understand, especially for our international applicants, that sometimes getting official transcripts take a little longer than normal. So when you're for anybody sending in transcripts, we need all transcripts from every post-secondary institution you attended. So that includes if you attend at one course um, at another institution during your degree at your home institution and it's been transferred over, we still need that original transcript. We won't use the grade that has been transferred to your home institution transcript. So keep that in mind. All post-secondary institutions you've attended, we need all transcripts. If you're actually admitted to the program and you did not provide official transcript at the time of admission, you will have 90 days from the start of the program to provide us with the official documents. And that is really important. It's in your offer of your mission. We will do numerous follow-up with you as a, as a new student if you don't provide those official documents so we can verify things you will be withdrawn from the program so keep that in mind um if you're coming from an international institution where um the transcript normally doesn't isn't provided in english we do need the university to provide an english version of the copy as well and if you've graduated, you have to make sure that your transcript indicates that you've graduated and the conferral date is not on the transcript. Um, your university also has to provide um, proof of proof of um, graduation. So like the diploma portion where it says you've graduated on this date. Outside of all the official documents for like transcript, Fred has mentioned um the importance of the professional project so we do require a personal statement and a project proposal and there's a little more information on our admission requirements with a link um, to the professional project section of the program so really as fred mentioned take your time with this piece because we really look at this um, project proposal and personal statement closely in addition, a required part of the application is a portfolio of work, obviously preferably um, journalism work, 
And um, we do understand that sometimes applicants who do not have a journalism background can't provide that. So it's important that you provide samples of other work, such as maybe essays or projects you have done during your undergraduate studies. We require a resume and CV. So if you have any journalism experience, you do want to highlight that on that uh, document. And we require two reference letters. If you've been in school within the last three years, we require two academic references. If you've been out of school um, for uh, like between three and five years, we, we will accept two academics or we will accept one academic and one professional reference. And if you've been out of school for more than five years, we will accept two professional references. For those who are providing academic references, it's important that you indicate the institutional email address on your application. Because for those institutions that are accredited, we will actually send the referees a direct link to the reference portal through Dalhousie and they could, can submit the confidential reference through the portal. For anybody else who doesn't have a, a post-secondary email address, the referee can send a signed letter to admissions at uking.ca. But just keep in mind the references cannot come from you as the applicant. The, if they're paper or emailed references, they have to be signed and sent from the referee themselves. Um, my information is not nearly as exciting as what a crit just mentioned, so please bear with me. If you are coming from um, a place where English, it, maybe English is not your first language, we do accept a large number of English language proficiency test scores. We may waive the requirement if you have studied in an institution where they taught your degree fully in English and from a country where English is the first language. So there are some kind of conditions there and they are listed in our e uh, English proficiency requirements. But if you have any questions on whether we would waive that requirement, definitely reach out to us directly and I can um, double check your background and let you know whether we would or we wouldn't. And I think that's it with uh, regards to proficiency requirements and admission requirements. I kind of talked about how we assess applications in batches. We do it on a rolling basis and uh, we really encourage you to get them in as quickly as possible. Now, Crate has mentioned scholarship, which is um, a really important piece as you're applying to graduate level programs or you're pursuing um, your graduate degree. And we do have a number of scholarships. I think the format here is quite easy to navigate. Um, if you only want to click on one to give you an idea, as you click on a scholarship, it opens up a um, box with all the information you need, the criteria, the, the annual value, whether it's renewable, the deadline to apply, as well as um, the application itself. So take a look at the criteria for, for each um, scholarship. And you only need to submit one of those applications. So you can actually check, check off one application or one scholarship you wanna be assessed for, or you can select several. So it depends on the criteria and whether you um, think you fit that criteria. And in the scholarship application, you also have to write a short, a short, I don't want to say essay, a short sketch, um, summarizing why you think you fit the criteria and why you would be the, a good candidate. And keep in mind that scholarship um, for people applying for September entry, the deadline to apply for scholarships is February 15th. And those applying for January, it's August 31st. The same deadline, whether you're applying, um, you're a domestic student or an international student. And as I mentioned earlier, even if you haven't heard whether you've been admitted or not, please submit a scholarship application. Um, we can uh, hold on to that scholarship application after decision has been made on your file. And 
that's it for me. I think there's a couple of questions, Fred. Indeed, there's a question for you. Um, did you say, this is Ari, uh, did oh. you say that professional references must be mailed in paper form or is email okay? Great question. We prefer email, but we would like it signed. So it could be a, it has to come from the referee themselves and they need to sign it, whether it's a digital signature or whether they want to print off their letterhead, sign it and scan it to us. Either is acceptable and the email address has to match what the email address you have indicated on your application. So I know some people have multiple emails. So it's important that we're receiving the um, reference from the email from the same one that you provided. Great. All right. So uh, we now uh, sort of reached that um, that moment. And thank you, Tara, for that all that great information. Uh, reached that moment where we're throwing it open to uh, to questions. Now, um, because of the webinar format, you need to type those into the chat. And uh, what I'll do is I will uh, I'll then uh, I'll sort of read the questions and uh, share them uh, with everybody. Of course, everybody can see them in the chat as well. Uh, but uh, I know that when I'm doing one of these things, uh, I'm always forgetting to look at the chat. Someone who's saying, hey, Fred, did you look at the chat? And I'm like, oh, yeah, right, the chat. <laughs> so, uh, but I have an eagle eye on it tonight. So, uh, yeah, we're uh, wide open here for uh, for uh, for some questions uh, about the Master Journalism Program, whether it be about the program itself or you can ask about the experience or indeed uh, further uh, things about the ad admission uh, processes. All right. Well, so far, no additional questions have popped into the uh, into the chat, and uh, but uh, uh, I must say that uh, it's it's been um, it's been quite a remarkable experience uh, teaching in the master's program because we meet uh, people from so many different places, you know, across Canada and uh, around the world. We have such a an interesting and varied uh, student body. It's very, very different from any of our undergrad uh, programs, uh, uh, in that you're 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 as likely to have somebody from from China and you know, India, uh, you know, Vancouver, <laughs> you know, the United States, all sort of sitting in the room together. And so there's a lot of sort of opportunity for for the people in the program to uh, to get to know each other and and uh, uh, make some friendships uh, you know people from all over the place all right so uh, we have a question um could you share any information about when first mm -hmm. round admissions will be now so I do you, I assume here that you're meaning um the results of, of those mm -hmm. um so let's go with that and unless you want to correct me in the chat Tara <laughs> um so we try to process applications as quickly as possible. There's always um, kind of a, a delay getting to that first committee meeting. Um, it really depends on the application itself. So some decisions are made quite quickly. Other times we will request an interview. And when we make a recommendation, we actually, because it's a joint program, Kings and the Master Journalism Committee assesses the application, and then we make recommendations to Dalhousie Faculty of Graduate Studies. So that recommendation goes to Dalhousie, and they either approve or not approve the decision or our recommendation. Doesn't happen often that they not they don't approve it, but I've had I've had them come back a couple times, and then Dalhousie will send. Um, the official offer of acceptance through email. So it's important to monitor that email, um, your, the email you provided on your application. So sometimes it can be really quick. Other times it's a little delayed if, if we set up an interview. Um, but uh, from the time the recommendation goes to Dalhousie, it's quite quick. Yeah, and that's that's really important to sort of underline this point that that we are that you are a student at uh, at both institutions. So, sort of a lot of the the front end work is happening at at King's, but then of course then Dalhousie is involved as well. But at the end, you you walk away with a degree uh, that uh, you know that that is from both institutions mm -hmm. in a sense, but I guess conferred officially by Dal, um, but it's also our degree. So. 
Um, what advice, uh, Medinat, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. What advice would you give to students who have no degree in journalism, uh, what to expect and how to thrive uh, successfully during and after the program? So I might take that one. Um, so, uh, th of course, this is why we have the September uh, admission uh, is to sort of bring you up to speed. And uh, we, we call it boot camp for a reason, because it is uh, an intensive, uh, it is an intensive three months uh, from there. And then the news workshop, um, certainly read lots of uh, read lots of news, uh, become sort of familiar Especially, I would say, with uh, with uh, news in Canada, the other CBC, Toronto Star, Globe and Mail, so to become aware of what's happening. Um, so pay attention to sort of how news reporters are, you know, when you read the news, often you're not really thinking or when you're listening to it, you're really thinking about how it was done, how the sausage was made, as we say. Uh, but sort of pay attention to how it's written, you know, the 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 cadence of the writing and how long the sentences are and 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 the the importance of getting that information that is the key point of the story right at the top of the story um, that, that so just sort of, uh, you know, and it, uh, it certainly would uh, would do you no harm. Um, as well, you know, just to Google around, you know, uh, and and find, you know, some, uh, you know, some initial advice out there, you know, on how journalists do their work. I mean, that's something you could certainly do on your own time uh, before you uh, before you come here. Um, and uh, so there's all kinds of things now during the program. So that's kind of before you get here during the program. I mean, one of the great things about Kings is there are no 300 uh, student uh, classes in enormous auditoria, you know, where the, the professor is this spec sort of somewhere down, uh, you know, 300 meters away. You know, it's it's all very small classes and you get to know your professors really well. And one thing that we pride ourselves on here, and this is truthful, I'm not uh, giving you a story here. We pride ourselves in giving all the time that's needed to working one on one with our students. So if you are having a problem with, you know, Python in my data class, I will sit down with you for an hour on Zoom to walk you through that. And the same thing with the other instructors. Um, so take advantage of that. Take advantage of the fact that we're here for you uh, to you know, work closely with you and give you all kinds of support um, as you go through. Now, you've also asked sort of after the program, and, and of course, after the program, you know, I always like to say we have the, you know, the lifetime guarantee, you know, that you can always reach out to us, get advice. Um, and certainly as you're sort of preparing to leave, we'd be delighted to give some advice in terms of, you know, uh, searching for work, find, help you make connections. And some luck when you're working on your professional project, you'll make some of those connections that will will then help you thrive as, as you leave. But as I say, I really think the core of it is that, that one-on-one -on -one support that uh, that you'll get here, and uh, uh, you know, I have students. You know, they they email me on the weekend, and we jump on Zoom on a Saturday afternoon for half an hour. You know, just to walk through a problem. So, yeah, that's a great question. Thanks for asking that. Uh, Fred, could I add to that a little bit? Just... Please, yes, go yeah. ahead. Well, you talked about the small classes, and I just realized I didn't really talk about numbers for admissions, which I think will give applicants and students involved in this web webinar some perspective. For the Master of Journalism program, we admit no more than 14 students a year. So it's a small class. Um, you really get to know um, your classmates. And as Fred mentioned, you really get to uh, work one-on-one -on -one with your professors yeah no and and that's certainly fewer than say at some other uh, some other of the you know the the other schools in in canada i think as a rule master's classes tend to be uh, tend to be smaller uh closer contact than big undergraduate classes anyway uh but i think that's sort of exacerbated and, and then especially so here at king's all right. Do we uh, do you have any other questions out there? And what uh, one famous CBC radio announcer once called Vacuum Land. Uh, uh, this is an announcer on a sort of a late night music show, you know, and he was 
I guess he was thinking about vacuum tubes, which is what we had before we had transistors and all the things that make computers run today. Uh, but uh, be delighted to entertain any further questions. We have, you know, maybe about seven or eight minutes left before uh, our promised uh, ending time. Well, all right then. Um, if if in fact there are not any other questions immediately, uh, what uh, what often happens to me, and I always joke about this, is that I remember the question that I wanted to ask about five minutes after the event ends. <laughs> I sort of kick myself. Why didn't you ask that when you had a chance? So, uh, the uh, uh, Ilana showed you the initial slide, um, and it had uh, the, the email addresses on it. Uh, so if you want to go back, you can certainly review the um, uh, review this and uh, and and have a look at. Uh, but mine is f f is in Frederick V Jones at uh, ukings.ca. Uh, uh, Crit, you had said that you would share your uh, contact information. Uh, uh, did you want to? Oh, you just did. <laughs> there you go. You typed it in, so you're ahead of me there. Um, and of course, admissions at ukings.ca is uh, where you can reach. Uh, reach Tara. So there's lots of different ways to uh, to get in touch with us. And uh, we, uh, we would more than delighted to hear from you uh, because uh, we'd really like to help you sort of make this journey from uh, from from uh, webinar to uh, to sitting in our classes, uh, learning about the web and many other things. Okay, so if there are no further questions, did any of our, our guests or panelists want to make any further comments before we call it a night? This has been absolutely lovely. Thank you so much for um, giving me the chance to come on and speak about my experience. And again, to anyone who's attending this webinar or might be looking at the recording, please, just reiterating, please feel free to reach out. Um, if you want to know more about, you know, something specific about the course, uh, if you're looking at the syllabus and thinking, hmm, I, I wonder if this we can do this in this particular course in the third semester of the program or something like that it's all still very fresh for me because i just graduated last year so feel free to reach out with those doubts or if you um, need any advice i am also very much a newcomer uh, in this industry um, so um, would love to be able to chat that's wonderful and uh, it's been a bit of a reunion here tonight because I really enjoyed uh, working working with you. Tara, did you have any closing comments before we yeah, call it a night? Yeah, I just thank you for joining us tonight. And uh, I'm one of two people in admissions. So if you do decide to apply or if you have applied already, and I know some people have, um, you will be hearing from us. And do not hesitate to ask any question that, that arises. Um, we're here to help. All right, that's great, Tara. And thanks, Yolana, for your uh, for your exemplary work in the background. Uh, the the slides do not just magically go from one place to another. And honestly, Yolana did most of the legwork of setting this whole event up. Uh, not most, all of it. So grateful for that as well. So uh, we're going to say good night uh, from Halifax. Thank you very much for joining us, and I I do hope I'm going to meet some of you soon. Good night, everyone. <laughs>